Which black and white movies are absolutely worth watching? Seven Samurai, original 1954 version. The Thin Man. Twelve Angry Men, 1957. Double Indemnity. Young Frankenstein. To Kill a Mockingbird. What screams this person peaked in high school to you? Regularly reposting the same picture of the one notable moment that they had in high school. One guy the first knew literally got our school emblem and mascot in a huge class of 2010 inches tattooed on his shoulder. My ex-stepmother constantly bragged about being a cheerleader in high school and winning a beauty walk in a town of like 500 people. She was still bragging about these the last time I saw her. She was in her mid-40s. Still acting like a typical, mean girl, when they're damn near, or past, 30. Anyone who bullies other adults as if they were still in high school. I graduated in 05. I was sitting at a tire shop waiting for my truck to get done and an employee slightly older than me walks up to me and asks me, with no previous interaction, if I played football in high school, wondering where this was going. I responded that I did, but I wasn't great at it. He asked what school I went to, and I told him. Then he starts talking about himself, how he was, all conference, and walking me through all of his high school accolades. I never asked for this conversation. I just sat there wondering why this nearly 40-year-old, wildly out of shape, tire shop supervisor was telling me all of this. Then just as soon as it started he bid me good day and walked off. It was bizarre. The best comparison I could make was that he was like the manager, Dan, from the movie Waiting. That was his vibe. That's how I knew he peaked in high school. Who did not deserve to get cancelled? Ignaz Philip Semmelweis. He was a Hungarian physician and scientist. Who was described as the savior of mothers. He proposed the practice of washing hands with chlorinated lime solutions in 1847 while working in Vienna General Hospital's first obstetrical clinic, where doctors' wards had three times the mortality of midwives' wards. Despite various publications of results where hand washing reduced mortality to below 1%, Semmelweis's observations conflicted with the established scientific and medical opinions of the Time and his ideas were rejected by the medical community. Some doctors were offended at the suggestion that they should wash their hands and mocked him for it. In 1865, the increasingly outspoken Semmelweis allegedly suffered a nervous breakdown and was committed to an asylum by his colleagues. In the asylum he was beaten by the guards. He died 14 days later from a gangrenous wound on his right hand that may have been caused by the beating. His findings earned widespread acceptance only years after his death, when Louis Pasteur confirmed the germ theory. The heavy metal artist that was accused of murdering Elisa Lam. Edit. It was mentioned in the thread but in case you missed it. His name is Morbid. The dislike button on YouTube and being able to see the ratio robbed us of our key tool to spot misinformation and call out corporate shill videos. Alan Turing. Janet Jackson. Jesse Slaughter. She was a pre-teen girl who made claims about the singer of blood on the dance floor having an inappropriate relationship with her. Because this was the internet in 2010. None of her claims were taken seriously. And she and her family were trolled, stalked, and harassed by the internet. Her father was made into a meme. You done goofed for trying to deter the internet harassers while having a folksy and naive view of how the internet works. Jessie herself was mocked as a meme for saying the silly sorts of things you'd expect an 11 year old with too much internet access to say. Jesse's father eventually died of heart problems, which I suspect were not helped by the stress his family was undergoing. And then years later, it turns out the blood on the dance floor guy underscore was underscore a sex pest.
giving validity to Jesse's claims all along. So, what we had was a case of a preteen girl coming forward about the abuse she suffered under a musician she was a fan of, and the internet cruelly torturing her and her family for doing so. She did not deserve that. What's are some signs that someone is a phony intellectual? They can't admit when they don't know something or act like an expert on every subject. Truly intelligent folk know the limits to their knowledge. When they can't admit they're wrong about something, an intelligent person, in my opinion, is someone who can admit when they're incorrect. Whatever you say they already know it and never admit that you are telling them something for the first time. They're more concerned about being right than actually learning from a conversation. They aren't actually listening to anyone else's points. Just waiting to talk. Their entire viewpoint sounds rehearsed and is unable to be modified to fit smoothly into the conversation. They tell you their IQ. Individuals with a falsely inflated ego of their intellectual capacity. Utilizing redundantly long phrases and employing unnecessarily complex words with an intent to draw. Demonstrably illogical bifurcations of simple issues with redundantly long sentences. They're phony intellectuals. People who work in forests what's the creepiest, scariest thing you've seen? Backpacking in Montana approximately 20 miles in and on our way back to the vehicle and smelled death. I had identified the smell before the other two in my group and the hair stood up on my back and we all went on high alert. Came a little further down the trail and there was a dead mountain goat on the trail. Luckily it had been dead for quite some time and the body already scavenged. First thought was, I'm within sniffing distance of a grizzly then what if I'm walking up on a grizzly's meal? Then to, okay take a pic and let's gtfo. Funny. I was literally talking to an old fella that used to trap wildlife in New Zealand just today and asked him the same question. He was doing this in the 80s. Says occasionally he would run into a fully fenced off area with barbed wire in the middle of nowhere and just back away. Because drugs and potentially people with guns. I was walking along the edge of a swamp looking for rare plants when I came across a tip up mound. That is when a tree falls over and the roots lift the soil. This can sometimes create a cave-like hollow. From my angle I could see through a hole and saw what looked like fungal mycelium sticking up into the air. Thinking, that's weird, I moved closer for a better look and the mycelium started moving back and forth like it was dancing. Weirded out I moved to TBE side where there is a larger opening into the mound to peer into. Both the fuzzy vulture chick and I startled each other a similar amount I think. Was hiking down off a mesa alone at night and kept getting the feeling that I was being watched. I had a headlamp that I was using in red mode because it was nearly out of batteries. And also to preserve my night vision. But mainly because it was almost out of batteries. Anyway. I get the feeling that I'm being watched for like the third or fourth time and I'm just like, fuck this. What is this? So I turn around and turn the headlamp to spot mode. Full bright white light. I see a shape, shadow quickly move behind some bushes like 25 yards behind me. Real low. Real fast. Real smooth. I stood there for maybe a minute weighing my options and decided I pretty much had none and just had to keep hiking. I started making more noise and tried to look bigger. Like by spreading my arms with my rain jacket. I also found a good sized stick. The worst part was I had to go back to red light mode as I knew I didn't have enough battery life. To make it back with the white light mode. I'd turn around occasionally and use the spot mode and I saw green reflected eyes several times. When doing so. Always about 25 yards off and always low to the ground. Seemed about the size of a deer. But deer don't hang out that low to the ground. Well. Or follow you for miles. I turned around and saw these eyes probably about 10 times. I called my friend after I kept seeing the eyes and hiked the rest of the way down talking to him. 
basically said, if I don't get back in about an hour, here's where you can find my body, lol. It was about a five mile hike and my light was flickering and dying towards the end. It died after I got off the mesa and I hiked the last few miles through fields without a light. Luckily it was a clear night. The stalking stopped once I left the mesa. At least I think. And that's the story of when I was stalked by a mountain lion all the way off his mesa. I think I was in his hunting territory and it had only just gotten dark. Pretty sure he was curious more than malicious. But man yeah it's pretty creepy knowing that you're being followed and watched by a mountain lion. I worked in national parks and also did some volunteer search and rescue. I guess I can talk about two of the worst things I ever saw in forestry. The latter one is scary. But also deeply tragic. Spooky. I was on a multi-day off-road camping trip by myself in the wilderness. So technically I was not working. I had found myself enjoying a night in the woods. Slightly tipsy on wine. I settled in for the night in my SUV and awoke to yelling far in the distance. It wasn't screaming. But nor was it singing. Something closer to chanting. Went to sleep nervous and with my army knife close. Woke up to someone knocking on my vehicle's glass. It was clearly human because they did the triple knock that all people do. As us came out of my covers to observe I saw a person looking in in the dark. I screamed something guttural and they ran. I couldn't believe it. I was hours and hours from the nearest town and if someone drive in over the night I would have. Heard the vehicle in the stillness. I was dumbfounded. I turned on my truck and stayed vigilant for a while. Nothing happened. Next morning I went and found a new spot to park and set up camp. The second is sadly something that is very explainable but very sad to see. One blizzardy night we hear that they are on the search for a woman who had disappeared from a group that was staying in a cluster of scenic cabins nearby. Not in the park, but very close to the border of it. But certainly a remote place. It took us about two hours to get to the cabins and talk to the people there. It was well under minus 17 C. Around zero in F. And with feet of snow. Turns out the people staying in the cabin were on psychedelics and at some point the young woman. Got spoiled while under the influence of drugs and had run off outside. In regular clothes and sneakers. My and my partner in the search unit picked a search patterns and started looking for footprints. We found some but then they broke off and we lost the trail. After exactly 3 hours and 41 minutes we found her clothes. And around soon after we found her. She was naked in her entirety. Including her shoes. She was barefoot. We found her sitting against a tree and we rushed over. It was clear at this point she was dead. In this time local police were already on the scene and after taking our statements they left. It was a tough few nights after. Nightmares too. I grew up off grid on a mountainside with no neighbors for at least a mile. I know that. Because our driveway was almost exactly a mile long. And no one shared it. We didn't have power or a phone. And as a young teen. I'd often walk about two miles through the woods to a friend's house. Who lived closer to the main road. I'd usually do this barefoot in the dark. Because that's what you do when you can't afford shoes. Let alone batteries or flashlights. The trick was to feel the path with your feet. And look up to find gaps in the trees. Anyway. They kept a herd of sheep and one year something killed one of them and dragged it about halfway to. My house. Then ate it beside the trail. I walked past it in the dark and even in the moonlight I knew there wasn't supposed to be a bright patch of white in this part of the trail. But I wasn't exactly going to stop and investigate. I was a brave kid but we did see black bears and cougars around. And I knew I wouldn't find anything good in the dark. Anyway, I started taking another trail to my friend's house. But in retrospect, that probably wasn't any safer. For what it's worth. Oregon only has one fatal cougar attack on record. Ever. And I don't think I was ever in serious danger. But it was still pretty creepy. 
subscribe my brothers